Okay, we are going to do the 14-3 work together problem, which is on page 430 in your textbook if you need that. And there are three steps to this. For each of the notes signed by PLD Inc., complete the following tables. Use the first one to show your calculations of maturity date, interest rate, maturity value. Use the second table to show total interest the maturity date and the total maturity value. So here are the two notes that we have. And note three, note four, we're going to do maturity date, interest calculation, and maturity value calculations. So let's start with note three. And it is a 90-day note. So in June, I know that I have 30 days, but I signed this note on June 5th, so from the 5th to the 30th is 25 days. So now I have 65 left, 90 minus 25. July has 31 days in it, so now I'm down to 34. And then August has 31 in it, so I'm down to 3, which means I'm going to use 3 days in September, and that is when it is going to mature. And I'm going to take $20,000, which is the principal up here, times the interest rate of 8%. And I believe I just enter it like that. Yeah, because they have the percent. And then it's a 90-day note divided by 360. And if I compute that, I would get $400. So the maturity value is equal to the principal of the 20 grand plus the interest we just computed. If we compute that out, it is $400. And that is our maturity value. And I'm going to go ahead and go down here and complete that. So $400. The maturity date is September the 3rd, we said. And the maturity value is 20400 which is principal plus interest. Then I'm going to turn around and do the same thing now for note number 4. It is a $10,000, so I'm just going to put that in there so I don't have to scroll back up. 10,000, 8% note percent note. So issued or signed on June 12th and it's 120 days. So from June 12th to the 30th we have 18 days which gets us down to 102. July we have 31 days gets us to 71. August 31 days gets us to 40. September has 30 days gets us to 10 which means October 10th is when it is going to mature. So I take 10,000 times 8% times 120 over 360. And when I do that, I get $200. We said that it's maturing on October the 10th. Sorry, the 10th. And it was originally for 10 grand, and the interest was 200, we said. So the maturity value, 10,200. 10,200. So let's go to our next step where we're going to journalize transactions. And there's our chart of accounts. And notice we have an account somewhere called there's all of those somewhere notes receivable the 1170 and there's the interest income of 7110 the new accounts that we're using so let's journalize these transactions again they're in the book and i'm going to refer to those while i'm journalizing so the first one is i'm accepting a 90 day eight percent note from Gary Kinney for an extension of time on the account, 1800 bucks. So on the 5th, 
I am going to debit notes receivable. Notes receivable. The document is in R5. The amount of the debit is the principal, which is 1800 bucks. And then I'm going to get rid of the accounts receivable. Gary Kenny for 1800 Got rid of the accounts receivable. So then the second transaction is on July the 12th. We're going to receive cash from this person for the maturity value of a 60-day 99% note for $500, and it's R113. So R113, the date is the 12th. I'm going to credit notes receivable for the principal amount to get rid of the note. Then I'm going to record the interest income. And to record that interest income, I have to compute it. And to compute it, I take P times R times T. So the principal is 500. The rate is 9%, so times 0.09 times 60 over 360, and if I do that, I would get $7.50, which means the cash I receive is the sum of that principal and interest, so 507.50, 507 507.50. And then the third and final transaction is this guy dishonors a note for 400 Bucks, so he's dishonoring a note. So on the 26, he dishonors it. So the first thing I know I'm going to do is I'm going to credit note rece notes receivable, if I could spell, for the face amount or the principal, which they said was 400 bucks. I'm also going to record the interest income that I did earn even though they haven't paid me for it as yet. So 400 bucks times 0 0.09 times 90 over 360. And if I did that, I would get $9 even, which means my debit's going to be for 409. Debit's equal credits. And I'm going to basically put the accounts receivable back to attempt to collect it but if not, send it to a collection agent probably and possibly write it off as uncollectible. So that is my three journal transactions. So going to the next step, we are going to post the entries and I'm just going to go ahead and show you the posting and talk through it with you real quick. So let's talk about First, the general journal. The post references are going to be in here. Again, this is the general ledger reference for accounts receivable, account 130, and then the customer Gary Kinney's account number 120. So I have to post to the subledger and the general ledger. It is no different than any other time you have posted, so that's your post references. Then in the cash receipts journal, what am I going to post? I'm going to post anything in the general debit and credit column here. So these two items are going to the general ledger. I don't post this cash debit because I know I'll do that as a total. Anytime I have an account name at the top here, I do the total. Unless it's AR and I had something, I'd go to the subledger. So that's no different than any time you've ever posted. And down here are the accounts receivable ledgers. And I would just pause when you're needing to and rewind if you want to update your work together. And you can see their new balances. The only thing that they didn't do in MindTap that you may have questions about is it talks about when I record, for instance, this $409. It was related to the dishonored note that you might write in here, dishonored note. And when it was an accepted note like it was with Gary Kinney, when we did that and they 
paid us, you'd write accepted note there. So that, sorry, is all of your work together. Posting not different at all. And if you need to pause and do that, you can. So here is interest income. And again, my answer key as an instructor has the account like it looks. If you do it and then my my way. So it's the same thing. There's notes receivable and accounts receivable and your two sub ledgers. That's it for work together.